Vladimir Putin. Part 10. Hello. I'm H.G. Tudor. You have listened to detailed information that I have provided following many, many hours of research across a variety of sources concerning Vladimir Putin. This was an extensive undertaking, and, of course, not all of the information that I have reviewed has necessarily been quoted, but has been taken into my evaluations. This is a substantial body of work, and I note that many of you have expressed your appreciation in the comments, for which I am grateful. It would also be appreciated if you were to show super thanks for this material. It is demonstrative of the way of the world that material as high calibre and as insightful as this doesn't necessarily rank in the number of views that talking in a tabloid manner about Harry's wife does. For many of you, you should notice that, and it ought really to send a chill down your spine. Nevertheless, thank you for listening to parts 1 through to 9, and please do ensure that you've liked each of those parts to increase the prominence of this material, to ensure that it reaches other individuals, not only to help them understand more about Vladimir Putin, but also to enable them to understand more about disorder and the identification of the appropriate behaviours. Please do share this work as far and wide as you possibly can. You can demonstrate your super thanks on desktops and laptops by going to the relevant section in the menu bar. Thank you in advance for your contributions in that regard. We now turn, after listening to all of that evidence, to determine what is Vladimir Putin. It's clear that he exhibits a substantial sense of entitlement. He, in effect, steals whether it's assets by way of the assets of his country, whether it's the fact that he steals individual items, as we heard with regard to the NFL ring. That stealing demonstrates a sense of entitlement. He orders people around. He is top of the tree and orders other capable individuals and treats them in a way as if they were children. He requires an immediate response to everything that he does. It must be dealt with now. In effect, he expects perfection. One only has to look at the way that he conducts himself, that he dresses, the things that he surrounds himself with. His major method of operation is what he wants, he will get. And therefore, he has a sense of entitlement that is rampant in terms of behaving as he chooses, that he is not to be restrained, that he can go where he wants, do what he wants, in any such manner as he pleases, either for himself or through the extensive proxy arrangements that he has. He has no emotional empathy. This is evidenced by the repeated manipulative behaviours that he engages in. The fact that he has been accused of orchestrating the death of people, whether it's through assassination or through invasion and war. The treatment of his own children, where they appear not to be recognised, demonstrates a lack of emotional empathy. The hiding of a relationship with the former Russian gymnast supports a lack of emotional empathy. The way that he treated his first wife and her descriptions of their relationship demonstrates a lack of emotional empathy. The allegations of the commissions of infidelity support an absence of emotional empathy. His conduct with regard to orchestrating an invasion of a sovereign state whereby indiscriminate shelling also exhibits an absence of emotional empathy. The levelling of Grozny in the Chechen conflict demonstrates an absence of emotional empathy. There is no emotional empathy whatsoever. There is a high level of an absence of accountability. He doesn't abide by the rules. He is the rules. He is the law. He doesn't define his relationships. It's clear he doesn't offer emotional support within those personal relationships. He lacks punctuality, using the question of attendance as something as a manipulation. It's clear he doesn't address the relationship issues that manifest. He just gets on with it in the way that he wants to do. He never apologises, because he's never at fault. There is overwhelming evidence of grandiosity. He engages in showmanship. He thinks he's the best. He's prone to exaggeration. He's vain. 
He engages in lengthy monologues. He has a mindset of invincibility. Nobody can touch him. He dominates conversations. He exhibits magical thinking. He essentially sees Russia as part of him, and that Russia is tied to him, that what he does is right for Russia, and that can brook no criticism, and that him and the fortunes of Russia are inextricably linked. He also sees himself as the person that is going to restore the former glories of the Russian Empire and the former Soviet Union. He exhibits haughty behaviours. He's condescending towards people, rude. He's dismissive. He holds court. He exhibits arrogance. He doesn't look up to anybody. He believes that he's always right. He operates with a closed mind. And he is entirely contemptuous of any form of opposition. He's hugely manipulative. He engages in flattery, bribery, the telling of lies, triangulation with object, triangulation with person, use of absent silent treatments, no doubt also personally the use of, person, the, of present silent treatments, the use of physical violence by proxy, the use of physical violence also in person. Think back to his early days of scrapping for survival. He engages in smearing, invalidation, belittlement, withdrawal, denial, use of guilt, Provocation, projection, blame shifting. There is use of the forbidden topic. For instance, the conflict in the Ukraine must not be described as a war. He controls finances. He utilizes insult. He utilizes fury. There's the destruction of property, the revision of history, gaslighting, alienation, argumentativeness, the concept of things not being good enough. Intimidation, deflection, a list of required improvements, use of cross-examination, and vagueness. There is a long list of manipulative behaviours. He has no boundary recognition. He engages in repeated asset appropriation. He doesn't recognise sovereign countries. He obtains personal information. There's interference, alleged interference with elections in other countries. There is no concept of privacy. He shows substantial aspects of the narcissistic dynamic, which includes monopolizing the time of people that he engages with, familial discord, utilization of facade management, seeing others as an extension of himself, character trait acquisition, black and white thinking. He, ex he exhibits a need to assert control. He exhibits a response to a perceived threat to that control. He engages in hypocrisy, scapegoating, objectification, Compartmentalization, the existence of paranoia. He engages in the hoovering of people. He engages in one upmanship. He rejects intimacy. He has many intimate relationships. He's competitive, and there is the use of a bolt hole. He has substantial aspects of the narcissistic dynamic. Accordingly, he exhibits an overwhelming sense of entitlement, a complete absence of emotional empathy. He has no sense of accountability. There's overwhelming evidence of grandiosity, evidence of magical thinking, overwhelming evidence of haughty behaviours, overwhelming evidence of manipulative behaviour, no boundary recognition, and substantial aspects of the narcissistic dynamic, which all supports the proposition that Vladimir Putin is indeed a narcissist. But it doesn't end there. He does exhibit charm. One only has to witness the Oliver Stone interview and the way that he deals with some of the people that he meets, that there is charm. But it is entirely superficial. He is grandiose. He's prone to boredom. This is demonstrative not only in the way that he exhibits the fact that he's, in, he's bored in the ways that he deals with people when he meets them, not seeking to hide it, but also the way that he shifts from one thing to another. He's highly manipulative. He has a shallow effect. He almost looks like a waxwork at times, leaving aside the allegations about the use of Botox, he has a shallow effect when it comes to his reactions. He's parasitic. He effectively has leached off the Russian state, commandeering its assets for himself. He exhibits impulsivity at certain times. There's the, the substantial lack of emotional empathy. He therefore fits with many aspects that would accord with psychopathy. Therefore, he is both narcissist, through narcissistic personality disorder, and psychopath as a consequence of antisocial personality disorder. He is an amalgam of the two. He is a narcissistic psychopath. He does have a requirement for fuel, albeit, unlike a pure narcissist, he is able to cope with extended isolation for substantial periods of time, 
more of the hallmark of the narcissistic psychopath. He does not exhibit fear, which again accords with his psychopathy. He's callous and ruthless, which fits with the psychopathy element of being a narcissistic psychopath. He's goal-driven, exhibiting a higher executive function when it comes to the pursuit of the control that it requires and the need to address the boredom that he experiences through his psychopathy. He can function as a loner, which also fits with the psychopathic element. He's therefore a hybrid of both narcissist and psychopath, and the outcome as to what is Vladimir Putin is he is a narcissistic psychopath. He functions as a psychopath, but he has that need for the response of others to validate his existence, which has been shown through his vanity, the necessity of provoking reactions, and, for instance, the ostentatious behaviours that, uh, that he exhibits and behaves. But alongside that, he doesn't have the pure ego-driven need of the narcissist because he is content to operate to a degree within the empty space that he is, governed by his psychopathy. Therefore, for those reasons that I've just described to you, we find that he is narcissistic psychopath. But what about his school and cadre? Where does he fall with regard to that? You've listened very carefully to the material, and I've seen in the comments already that people suggest that he might be a lesser, some suggest greater, others with regard to mid-range, and varying views when it comes to his cadre role. So, if you'd like to find out what his school and cadre are, that is determined in the next episode of this series. In the meantime, give me your thoughts in the comments as to what school and cadre you believe him to be. Some of you appear to have come rather close in your observations already, and I look forward to reading them further. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.